Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how to make a wood epoxy dinosaur egg bowl. Now this started off as a uh, old maple tree that had died in my friend Jay Bates's yard and he actually had it cut down by professional tree service and I, he just let me get a hold of a lot of the wood. It had some really nice spalting through it. But this piece that I'm using for this is actually the top piece that hit the ground really hard and it just shattered like glass. So it's this really interesting pattern through it. I thought about a few different ways to actually contain the epoxy I wanted to pour into the cracks and none of them really fit great. So I decided to just use packing tape. Now this worked fine, but there is a few tricks to it. First off, make sure you do multiple layers of the tape and wrap the tape nice and tight. Now this serves two purposes. It actually holds the shattered log together and also contains the epoxy as you pour it in. As you can see, I'm putting multiple layers over the area where the epoxy is going to be a little thicker. The reason for that is epoxy has a nice bit of weight to it and if there's any open seams there, it will find those seams and leak. Also, the next part is do multiple layers across the bottom. This will not only keep the epoxy from pouring out, but it gives you a nice surface to set the uh, log down on or whatever the project is down on, and it not stick to whatever surface you're working on. Usually, I try to do a uh, math equation and figure up exactly how much epoxy I'm going to need, but to be honest for this one, I had no idea, so I pretty much just guessed at it and figured I was going to need somewhere right around 24 or 20 ounces of epoxy, so I went ahead and mixed up about 22 ounces. Now, this might be a little wasteful in the end, but doing a custom mixed color like I planned, it's much easier doing it that way and having a little bit left over as to too little and having to mix up more later and hoping you can get the colors perfectly matched. Using Tiff Blue and Dark Blue Juice from KP Pigments and Total Boat Epoxy, the color come out great. I wanted this really interesting brighter blue but had some nice pearlescence through it and this worked really well with these colors. Just like any epoxy project, make sure to mix your epoxy really well and get the colors thoroughly mixed. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing pours like this is you're physically pouring into small cracks. So as the epoxy goes down into the cracks, air has to have somewhere to go. So when you're doing this, really take your time doing the pour. This will allow air to be pushed up by the epoxy and out as much as possible. Now, if you have a pressure tank that's large enough to fit whatever project you're doing like this, I highly suggest it, but mine was just a little bit too small, so I had to just kind of rely on doing slower pours and hoping all the air was pushed out. If you over pour accidentally, just grab you a stick or a paintbrush and push the epoxy back into the cracks. And another cool thing about using clear packing tape is you get to see the voids fill up on the sides of the project and it's really awesome to watch. So I really enjoyed that part. And as you can see, there's a little bit of air bubbling up, but it wasn't too bad. So that told me that I should have a pretty good cast without too many air pockets. So after everything was fully cured, I went to remove the tape and found out that removing the tape was a lot more difficult than I really thought it was going to be. So after a little while of fumbling with it, I just decided that I would turn it off as I turned the log on the lathe. I wanted to use a worm drive to actually do the initial turning of this, so you have to mark the center of the project. Uh, both the length and the width centers have to be marked so you can get as close to dead center as possible to drill the hole for the worm drive screw. Now, something I had learned through this process as it was the first time I had attempted to use a worm drive is that you need to make sure that it is really nicely balanced. And that's something that I had a lot of trouble achieving with this kind of weird shape log. So after chiseling down some of the corners so I could run it through the bandsaw and shorten it up so it would fit properly on the lathe, and fighting with the worm drive, I decided the best thing I could do was just go to a different way of turning. So I decided to use a one and a quarter inch Fostner bit with a four jaw clamp on the chuck opening up holding the project for the initial turning. 
Now it's time for the fun stuff to start turning. Now, as you can see, this thing is bouncing and jumping all over. And that's due to the fact that the log is not perfectly round or perfectly uh, balanced. So you have to really take your time and don't get in a rush. Take off small chunks at a time until you get your initial shape going. And also use a, a bowl gouge or in this case a spindle gouge or carbide because with the ingrain turning if you're using a rough gouge it will grab onto the project on a side note turner's gloves are just other gloves without the fingers really help to save the side of your hands during this process plus it's cool looking like michael jackson Take your time in shaping the projects like this. This is a weird shape to this bowl. So this is something that the turning really took a lot of time. And uh, going back and forth between like a uh, spindle gouge or bowl gouge and carbide really made things easier for me. And also using the corners to really slowly take off fine amounts of material at a time made the turning a lot easier. If you try to turn this too fast, you're going to have trouble. And not only that, but due to how you're turning this bowl with so much weight, you really don't want to turn the speed up of the lathe too high for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that it, it could break and fling off to you and be a safety hazard. So just keep that in mind when turning projects like this. Uh, just take your time and don't get in a big rush. The slower you go, the better your finish is going to be anyway. If you have access to carbide cutting tools, this is a great project to use them on. Doing ingrain turning like this on the lathe can be really difficult with some of the particular steel tools such as gouges. Uh, as they'll dig into the grain and then you have to risk either damaging your project or even shattering the project and injuring yourself in the process. And especially with things like this, the end of this bowl at the end where it's going to open up is actually a really strange shape with a live edge contour to it. And I wanted to keep that for a specific reason and specific look. But that being said, it made the turning process a little different. You have to go really slow on the ends, making sure to not catch a corner and shatter out any of it. So you just take your time on it and keep the tool moving. Try not to hold the tool in too much of one spot. And also try not to do super deep cuts all at one time. It really helps to also keep the tool up against your body with your hand firmly against the rest, controlling the tool with your body instead of trying to control it with your hands. After the outside of the bowl is shaped, I went ahead and cut a hole into the bottom of the bowl. This is so I can mount it to the four jaw chuck and actually hollow out the inside of the bowl. And this will give me a nice firm grip on the bowl with the four jaw chucks and make it where I don't have to worry about having any trouble how it's turning or how it's spinning on the chuck. After getting the hole drilled out, I went ahead and flattened off the bottom of the bowl and sanded it down. That way the bottom of the bowl is pretty much ready for finishing. Turn the bowl over and hook it back to the four jaw chuck. And this is just a process of starting to hollow out the bowl. This is a long, tedious process and you need to take your time. Especially with a bowl that is so oddly shaped on the edges. Take your time and get out to the thickness you want so you know how far out to go toward the walls. And then after that, just start hollowing out the center. Using the one and a quarter inch hole at the base to be kind of a guide to your depth. I wanted the upper edges of the bowl to be a nice smooth surface and that would be a contrast to the live edge pieces that would dip lower. So I went ahead and flattened them off and rounded off the inner edges now that way uh, I could actually get an idea of how thick I wanted the walls to be. One thing to keep in mind is as you're cutting down into the bowl and hollowing it out, make sure not to get too aggressive, especially up on the upper corners, as if you grab one of the corners of the pieces of the live edge sticking out, it could possibly shatter part of the bowl, 
and ruin your project. As you can see, this is a pretty long process, and it's something that just takes time. You're welcome to use a larger drill bit and hollow out the bowl. And there's also specialty lathe tools made to help with this. But honestly, I don't have any of those at my disposal, so I just took my time cutting small slivers all the way down to the base of the three-quarter inch hole, slowly widening it out to the width that I wanted the bowl hollow to be, and then also gauging the thickness of the walls as I didn't want them too thin for this particular project. Another thing I do is using the foster bit, I drill back into the center. The reason I do this is I use the bottom of the hole drilled with the drill to be my depth gauge. So I take this down to what I feel like I want my final depth of the bottom to be. And it makes it much simpler to actually turning down the side walls and knowing exactly where your depth is going to be in the center. Now that the inside of the bowl is hollowed out, it's time to start finishing. I started with some 80 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander and used this to get rid of all the live edge pieces and uh, tape and everything else that I didn't want on the live edge sections of the bowl. That way it had a really nice clean look but with that really interesting natural contour all the way around. After that, it's just like any sanding process, starting with a lower grit such as 80 or 120 and working your way up. With this particular bowl, I started at 80 and used a couple of small jigs to do the inside so I kept the rounded contour and worked my way all the way up to about 5,000 grit as this would polish the epoxy really well and give a really nice sheen to the wood. Now for my favorite part adding finish. I added mineral oil to it and as you rub it in you'll actually physically watch it darken. You can see the color just change from this brighter white maple to this beautiful darker brown and with the blue epoxy the contrast and the colors it's just insane. I was super happy with how that was coming out and how the grains were showing along the bowl. Before you start the polishing process, make sure to wipe down the project and get all the excess mineral oil off. And then you add some E-Ultrashine wax and just spread it around with the project stationary and let it dry for just a couple of seconds. And then when you turn the lathe on, turn it to a higher speed and add a little bit of pressure. The heat will cause the wax to actually polish the material and give a really beautiful high shine without changing the color of the project. Well, there it is, guys, my wooden dinosaur egg. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I loved making this bowl, and I just absolutely love how it came out. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video. Also, go check out my Instagram, at Woodworking and my Facebook, at Woodworking also. And if you want to show your support, head over to Patreon, or you can go check out my Etsy store. Both the links are in the description below. And guys, leave me some comments and let me know what you think of the bowl or the process, or if you have any questions, and we'll see you guys later.